How to Live in Denmark podcast. I'm Kay Zander Mellish. Is there politeness in Denmark? That was the question I was recently invited on a national TV show to discuss. The implication was that I was supposed to say that Danes were not at all polite, because cheerful agreement makes for a rather dull TV show. But Danes are not impolite. They have their own version of courteous behavior, which is based on reinforcing aspects of their culture that they care about. Gender equality, for example. Gone are the days when a gentleman would pull out a chair for a lady or walk on the outside of the sidewalk to protect her from mud and rogue horses. Chivalry died so feminism could live. No one expects the modern Danish man to take off his costly high-performance all-weather rain jacket and put it over a puddle so a lady can walk across without dampening her feet. She has her own costly high-performance all-weather rain jacket and probably some spiffy high-performance waterproof boots to match. Gender equality is why it is considered polite in Denmark for couples to split the bill on first dates. It is courteous to make the lady pay for her own hamburger. This shows that a Danish man respects her autonomy and earning power. It's also why some Danish women enjoy dating non-Danish men. I find there is still a gender divide when it comes to giving up your seat for the elderly on public transport, however. Old ladies are quite pleased when you give up your seat for them. In fact, they often demand it. Older men, by contrast, can get rather huffy when you offer your seat, because they like to think of themselves as still quite vital and handsome in a Sean Connery kind of way. I have learned to avoid offering men seats unless they're using a cane or wearing that long 1960s-style dark raincoat the universal sign of a man who is extremely old and owns it. Another important part of contemporary Danish etiquette is respecting people's time. Everyone in Denmark is extremely busy or likes to think that they are. That's why turning up to appointments on time is so important. Not just in a business context, but in a social context. I'll never forget the time I planned a 7 p.m. dinner party on a chilly winter night. I happened to look out the window at 6.55 and was surprised to see all of my guests sitting in their cars, with the heat running, ready to push my doorbell at precisely 7 p.m., but not a minute before. This social punctuality is a shock for many internationals, whose own version of politeness is to be fashionably late. Even in New York City, where I lived before moving to Denmark, An 8 p.m. start time suggests you should turn up eh, 8.45 or so. If you turn up at 8 p.m. for the New York appointment, you will encounter a host or hostess with wet hair, wearing sweats, still folding the napkins and putting them on the table. Turn up at 8.45 in Denmark, by contrast, and you will get a burned dinner and a boiling mad host. Another part of Danish social etiquette is booking your engagements very far in advance. Internationals always gasp when they tell them that mid-October is already far too late to invite your Danish friends to a Christmas party. And once booked, an appointment is a nearly sacred obligation. Even if the dates is months in advance, you simply turn up at that date and time without ever needing to reconfirm. You don't cancel unless you're sick, you have a family emergency, or there's some kind of natural disaster like a hurricane. It's considered very poor form to cancel just because you got a better offer, or because your team made the playoffs and the game is on TV, or worst of all, that you're simply too busy. This would rudely suggest that you are busier than the person you canceled on, or at least think you are. Of course, once you sit down at a Danish dinner table, all time management goes out the window. You're expected to spend hours talking, eating a bit, drinking a lot, and talking some more. Being in the moment and enjoying the other guest's company is hygge. And prioritizing friends and family for a short time above the cares and the stresses of the world and all the other stuff you need to get done is the highest form of Danish politeness. And that's 
the How to Live in Denmark podcast for this week. Join us on howtoliveindenmark.com, where you can get a How to Live in Denmark t-shirt or hoodie. You can also get our books, How to Live in Denmark, How to Work in Denmark, and our newest book, Working with Americans, Tips for Danes. Or follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. See you next time.